Hi, I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to look at the end-to-end -end process of creating a gilded mirror. So unlike a lot of my videos where I would put a link up here and a link in the description to some of the processes leading up to the starting point, this is going to start at the beginning and go all the way through. So because of that, I've put chapters in the time slider so that anyone who's familiar with my videos and doesn't want to hear me waffling on about something they already know can skip to the relevant sections. But before we move on, I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone who watches and everyone who's subscribed. I never really expected it to be very popular because it's such a niche subject. So, I mean, the amount of subscribers I've got has way exceeded expectations. So thank you very much. So now I'm just going to jump over into Photoshop and we'll get started on the file prep side of things. So the design I'm going to be working on today is this Bitcoin logo, and this is already how I need it, which is just two solid colors. And that means the vinyl cutting software can differentiate between what it needs to cut and what it needs to leave. If you're going to be working on a different file that isn't already prepped with black and white, I was just going to go over one of the techniques that I would use to convert something like this so that it's ready for the vinyl cutting software. So looking at this, it's got a lot of black information, but I don't really want to be kind of extracting any of this color or compressing anything really by just converting it to grayscale and then using levels. So I'd look at what I could do with the different channels here. So if I go to Window and Channels and get the color channels up and click on them individually. So the red channel isn't really workable because a lot of this text and the barrels are going too pale. The green channel looks really good. And I think, you know, this gray here could be pushed to black and then the, the PABS logo would stand out. And similar to the red channel, the blue doesn't really work either. So using the green, what we can do is create an image from this by calculating this channel. So if we go up to image and calculations, and just from being clicked on the green, that's already done a calculation for me, which is the green channel multiplied by the green channel. Now what multiply will do as a blend mode is exactly that. Anything with tonal information, it will double it. It won't do that for white because that's not classed as tonal information. So in this case, multiply is perfect because all I wanted to do is keep the white areas but make everything else black. In some cases, you might have to play around with this. Overlay is another good one to use. In this case, it isn't working for me, but overlay will make anything above 50% gray black and anything below 50% gray white or not necessarily black and white but certainly lighter and darker and the only other one I would be playing around with is screen and screen is kind of the opposite of multiply it will double the brightness so I'm going to stick with multiply but I don't want this as a new channel I'd want this as a new document so when I do that I've now got the document that um, is pretty much ready to be pulled into the vinyl cutting software and vectorized. The only thing you'd have to do is make sure you convert that from what it is, which is a multi-channel document, to grayscale. You can then convert it to RGB if you wanted to, but there's there's no need to in this case. So anyway, that was just one of the methods that I'll use sometimes if I'm converting an existing logo, but a lot of the time I'm working on my own designs, so I sort of take these things into account when I'm doing them. So moving over into my vinyl cutting software. Now this is called Vinyl Master LTR and I bought it years ago. It's not an annual subscription. It's a one-off cost. When I bought it, I think it was less than £100. I don't know what it is now, but it's, it's absolutely perfect for what I need it for. When you start it up, you've got an option of creating a new document, which is what I've got here. And I've prepped my Bitcoin file as an 8x10 document um, in inches. So I'm just going to change the document settings here to 8 by 10 and then just import that file so and then it will give you this drag window where starting at the top corner if you just click and then drag it down to the bottom corner there you've got your image ready to be vectorized and vectorizing I mean, in this software is extremely easy. It's click of a button stuff. So it shouldn't, you know, be daunting to people who aren't familiar with programs like Illustrator or even Photoshop. You know, if you can just get an image to two solid colors, 
this program will do the rest. So all I've done is imported the image in, then I'll just click Vectorize. And what that's offering me here is saying, this is what is determined that we want, and this is the original image, but this isn't what we want. I want the opposite of this. So what I'm going to do is right click to turn the black on and then right click the white to turn it off. The reason I'm turning the white off is because if I have two colors, it will do two cuts. It, meaning it will cut the exact same path twice, but obviously stuff like this and something so small and intricate it's never going to be 100% accurate and you'll just have sort of crossed lines and, and messed up vinyl. So in this case, just checking off the white, it might not be visible on the screen, but you can see that there's that sort of transparency behind this in the checkerboard. So, and that's it. And then it's just trace. And then just accept. And now the image has gone and it's been replaced by the vectorized version of it. So that's ready to go. So all I need to do is go to File, Send to Cutter, and then you've got this preview, which will just show you where it's going to sit on the vinyl. Now you can change some of these things. If you've got quite a large piece that's not going to, that's going to be too big for the width of the vinyl, you can rotate it, but in this case you don't need to. And Mirror. In our case this is important because the thing what we're doing is going onto the back of the glass so I want it mirrored. Everything else that's here is fine. And then I would just go to cut now to send it to the vinyl cutter. Okay, so my design's been cut into the vinyl, so now all I need to do is apply it to the back of the mirror. And what I'm going to use for that is vinyl application tape. Now, this stuff is probably about £35 a roll, but it comes in 100 metre rolls, and that goes a long way. So I think this is my third roll ever, and I've been doing this for six years, so can see how long it lasts. So firstly, I'm just gonna take a bit of application tape that's about the same size as the bit of vinyl that I want to apply to the mirror. And I'm just gonna start by holding that down. It might not seem like it needs it, but there are a few little creases here it will cause air bubbles if I apply the backing tape, uh, the application tape to it while there's sort of creases at the front. So just want to smooth that on. And then sort of just going along in about half inch to one inch sort of motions until the backing tape covers the whole vinyl. Now, the vinyl's only going to be a mask, so the uh, air bubbles themselves aren't a problem aesthetically but they, they can sort of cause weaknesses when you're sandblasting. So if there's an area that you've got an air bubble in, that's not as strong as where the vinyl sat flush against the glass. So if you go over it with the sandblaster too many times, you might end up making a hole where the air bubble is and etching the back of the glass where you don't want to. So I'm just going to trim this off. And then apply it to the back of the mirror. So best way to do this is to just kind of peel away a slight bit. You want to expose around about an inch of the tacky side of the vinyl. If I can get hold of it. So pull it back and then fold this over. So it wants to look like that and just expose in a very small amount. That's because you're using this as a sort of protector while you, while you line this up. So you just want to hold this making sure it's flush to all of the edges. And this bit just kind of makes sure that doesn't fall down and stick to the back of the mirror. But once you're satisfied, you can just push that down, smooth that along with your thumb, and then in an upwards motion, pull the backing tape off. You don't have to pull it off all the way, you can do it in parts. So if you just pull it up to here, pinch it, and then just start doing the same motion, half inch to an inch. Now, keep hold of this firm, you know, because if you suddenly plow into that and you haven't got a good grip of it, you'll end up, this will fall onto here and you'll end up kind of messing your design up and having to sort of start from, from scratch again. So go halfway and kind of roll it up, always coming upwards. And 
Once that's on, just give it a good firm rub to make sure it's on properly. Then all you need to do is remove the application too. And again, this is coming in a sort of motion across the vinyl and not upwards, just in case you sort of pluck parts of the design out. And that's happened to me before where I kind of pulled it and then seen bits of the design stuck onto here. And then it's a painstaking job of just picking them off and trying to put them back in. But as you're pulling across the vinyl, it should be okay. So, that's the vinyl applied. I'm just going to change the camera angle now for the picking and then after that's done, we'll take it out into the shed for the sandblasting. So picking the vinyl is a pretty easy job and it's also quite therapeutic, but you do need to just keep an eye out when you're doing it. It's not just as simple as grabbing one loose bit and pulling it and the rest comes off. Those tiny little details could still be bonded with the, the bits that have had the lines cut through them, so you just have to make sure that you're keeping an eye on things and you're not going to pluck anything that you don't want to get removed. So this is ready to go into the blaster now. I've just left it by a heat source for a couple of hours and that's to let the glue on the back of the vinyl bond with the surface of the glass. If you don't do this, there's a risk that the smaller details could get blasted away if they haven't quite bonded to the surface. Just another tip, if you're working in the winter in a place that's cold, it's better to warm that place up and let the sand get to a decent temperature because if your sand is freezing, it can make the vinyl really brittle. And that again can just sort of blast off the sort of more delicate areas. So just a couple of tips there, but I'm going to get this into the blaster, change the camera angle and turn the sound down because this thing makes a racket. So I have my sand blaster set to between 30 and 40 PSI and I use 120 grit aluminium oxide. Now you could use a higher grit than that. I have in the past used 300 grit, but the vacuum just tends to suck it up and you only get one blast out of it. So when it comes to sandblasting the back coating off a mirror, you want to be quite close and do this slowly and methodically and just move along as you can see the light coming through from behind. So it's not a distance and even spread kind of affair like spraying spray paint. You do this quite close up and just slowly move it around and then just holding it up to the light to see that you've got everything that you need and that there isn't any gaps left. So that's all the sandblasting done. All I've done now is applied a thin coat of clear acrylic lacquer to the design on the back of the glass. That just gives it a much better surface for the gold leaf to apply to. So in terms of applying gold leaf, I'm going to go through the tools that we'll use. So firstly, a gilder's tip. This is what you'll use to pick up the leaf and apply it onto the glass. There's a gilder's mop. This is what we use to apply the size mix to the back of the glass. Now size is the correct name for the solution that we used, but really what it is, is a mixture of distilled water and leaf gelatin. So this is only a small piece, so I'm just using half a pint of distilled water. And then for that, I'm going to use two diamonds of leaf gelatin, so a pretty small amount. And you just put those two diamonds into the distilled water, leave it for five minutes, and then once that's softened up, just give it probably two and a half, three minutes in the microwave, just before it starts to boil. Other tools need a gilder's knife. This is for cutting up the gold leaf. And you have to make sure when you handle this that you don't touch the blade. If you do, you'll have to clean it and let it dry because any oils from your skin will make the gold leaf stick to the knife. So, and a gilder's cushion. And this is for just laying the gold leaf onto and using your knife to kind of chop it up into the sizes that you need. You need some Vaseline or petroleum jelly, depending on where you're from. And this is just to put a tiny bit and rub on the back of your hand and then you'll use your gilder's tip to just get a tiny bit of that onto the bristles and then that picks up the leaf and obviously gold leaf so I'm just going to change the camera angle and then get started with the gilding. So the first thing to say about working with gold leaf is that you have to be very gentle with it it's super delicate and the slightest gust of wind and the leaf will be gone so if you apply it to the cushion it doesn't go on properly you want to get over the top of it and just with a very light sharp breath just blow on the top of it this has to be on the top if you and not directly above it and you blow that gold leaf will just fly away. So I'm just going to cut this into sections for, to apply to the back of the mirror and then I'm going to apply some Vaseline on the back of my hand and then gently rub the gilder's tip over it just so that it's got enough to adhere the gold leaf to. Now looking back on this I've just rubbed that on the back of my hand way too hard. It's supposed to be just a delicate touch not kind of like painting the back of your hand so that just leaves me with a leaf that is going to get stuck to the tip rather than going directly onto the glass. Now, I was so ashamed of this guild that I considered just ditching this video altogether, but I thought, well, I may as well put it in there and show people that 
everyone makes silly mistakes so you'll see now how terrible this guild is because that leaf is not wanting to come off the off of that tip so if you've done this the best thing to do is to try and get that vaseline off so i just rubbed it on my jeans uh, just don't rub it on your skin because the oils on your skin aren't going to help anyway so i'm just chopping that up hoping that that's fixed my issue but it's going to take a few applications before it's back to perfect but you can see from the first to the second there's already a vast improvement of how that leaf is going on so i'm just going to continue in this vein and then eventually that'll just start laying on there perfectly once you've covered all of the areas of gold leaf you then need to put that near a heat source and let it dry and this needs to be completely dry because it needs another coat and before you apply the second coat you need to burnish it and what burnishing does will remove any of the kind of creases where the leaf has gone on with with folds in it so for this you just use cotton wool and just run it gently in circles and then once that's done you can then apply your second coat of gold leaf and this is a finished piece i'm really happy with how it's come out i think the gold looks nice it's not a mirror finish guild but certainly catches the light a lot more so than if it was gold paint or anything like that also really happy with the depth that it was sandblasted to i think that adds to that kind of microchip elements of the design gives it a kind of relief and it also casts little mini shadows and catches the light in different ways so overall really happy with it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it so till next time cheers